Hello and welcome to The Show Must Go On, a show where I get to speak with people in show business. Today's guest is Steve Foster. He is an actor of film and television. Let's take a listen. When did you first realize um, acting was something you were interested in? I kind of came over time. I used to be way more... uh, of a background person i did you know the technical behind the scenes and stage crew stuff like that i and part of that process was just getting over the fear of being on stage or in front of people and you know all the things that go through your head you're thinking you know what if i screw up what if you know what if they laugh? What if, you know, when they're not supposed to? Or So, yeah, it was just a process over time. And actually, um, I was encouraged by others. It wasn't really something that I necessarily sought out to do <laughs> with my life. Okay, so when did you first, when you said you were behind the scenes, when did that start? Oh, as a kid, even in grade school, we had uh, elementary school every year. We'd do like a a class play or or we'd even have variety show and different things like that where people would do talent type stuff. And uh, I was always involved somehow, but it was always kind of behind the scenes and then Probably around junior high school, I started to try to do some more where I was out front, but the whole standing up and speaking in front of people was a huge fear for me, something that I definitely had to overcome. When did you get your first official acting job, and what was it? Oh, wow, you mean paid? <laughs> yeah. Because not, not all of them are paid. Some of them you do just because you enjoy the work right. with the people and the project or whatever. Um, my actually very first paid one would have been, it's, it was a movie called The Breakup, shot here in Chicago, Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston and uh, a few other uh, well-known people, John Favreau's in it, um, Jason Bateman's in it, and uh, I was really just, because I have that Midwestern look, and they seem to like that, I mean, whenever they shoot in Chicago, and it has a lot of Chicago elements in that movie, they want people that look indigenous <laughs> to the area, um, but probably my biggest um breakthrough thing and i i talk about this in the bio that i sent you and this came completely out of the blue i mean a lot of times you send your stuff out and you have no idea whether it even gets opened because back in the day you used to have to actually send paper photos and a resume and, and stuff like that And uh, Kathleen Zellner, who is a big defense attorney here in the Chicago area, um, was taking on a case, and uh, it ended up getting national national attention. Um, It was a, a little girl, and her dad was supposed to be looking after her daughter, and... They all fell asleep. Somebody snuck into the house and took the the girl and um, unfortunately molested her and dropped her in the river. But they immediately, the police focused on the father and coerced a confession and threw him in jail. And this defense attorney took on this case pro bono and... She wanted to recreate the, um, you know, the environment that was going on that how they coerced a confession out of him because 
eventually they used DNA to exonerate him. But I got to play one of the main uh, roles. I was the um, the lie detector operator, and it actually I still see it occasionally. It was just rerun on the ID channel because they rerun ABC's 2020. And then um, E! News has done it a bunch of times. ABC News has, has run it a bunch of times. And they used this video of the, you know, them, um, you know, trying to get a confession out of him as a, a main uh, part of the court case. And he actually won. They won a huge judgment. And uh, he was found to be uh, not involved at all. And then they did end up finding the actual um, person who was somebody that lived in the neighborhood and had a, a background of, of kidnapping and, and sexual um, deviacy. So, so yeah, there's, there's some stuff that y you have no idea that it's coming and all of a sudden it finds you a lot of times. <laughs> so do you, um, look for work or do you, um, get, receive emails from an agency and do you have to go through auditions to do this? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, um, probably most of my stuff comes through people that I have gotten to know through networking and they either work with a casting company or, um, they, they know somebody who has a project that's going on and they, they typically, um, are looking for an age range a uh, specific look, for lack of a better term. Um, but sometimes I'll get, uh, you know, auditions. I'm not the greatest auditioner. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll openly admit that. So most of my stuff is usually somebody remembers me and they find, you know, because I am registered with the local casting people and I keep in touch with them and they'll just reach out and say, Hey, are you available for this on this date? Um, this is what, what the deal is. And, and it goes from there, but there, there's also smaller projects. I just did a project for tower productions. That's in Northfield, Illinois for the weather channel. And it was a recreation of a, a family that was caught in a huge tornado uh, a few years ago and, and they used it, the recreation on uh, the Weather Channel Storm Stories, which they take region by region, they take certain st stories of inspiration, you know, people that survived extreme weather conditions or, or did heroic things under um, extreme weather conditions and that just aired uh, for the first time on November 1st. So I'm pretty proud of that one too, because the guy, um, the, the real person that I portrayed, <laughs> it's, it's interesting, the more I, you know, looked into the character, I mean, he and I are very similar. And it's weird when you get cast as basically the person that you are. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes it's not that much of a stretch, you know, it's just casting people usually know exactly what they're looking for. So is this, um, do you receive in some of your projects residuals? I'm not in the union and oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not by choice. Um, I know a lot of people that did jump at the chance to join the union a few years ago. They had kind of a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, a cattle call or, or whatever. I've, I've chosen not to be, and part of that is because I don't have the freedom to do it full time, and I don't really okay. want. I don't really want that to be my primary career. 
Okay. And the thing I really enjoy about it is it, it's, I tell people, it's kind of like going to a fantasy camp. If you were wanting to be a baseball player or a basketball player, they have these camps that you go and, and, you know, you hang out with some former NBA stars or major league baseball stars or whatever, and you get to play whatever sport with them. Well, this is kind of the same thing. I get to film a commercial or a TV show or a movie or whatever with, you know, biggest names around. And that's just because there's a lot going on in Chicago and I put myself out there and I do, I do my, my information updated, which is important because they want it to be current. They don't want you to have like a 20 year old photo on your profile and, you know, they, they want that look and then you show up and you're 20 years older, right. <laughs> you know? So, you know, you do have to be open, honest and genuine and, and just trust your look. And, uh, but yeah, if you're in the union, there's a lot more involved. You really have to meet certain criteria. And I just don't feel that overwhelming desire to want to be that into it because it's there's a lot of not real glamorous stuff about it <laughs> if you could as far as give advice to someone what would you give them they, this is something they might want to do well, I usually give people the same advice. Find what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about it, you're, you'll be willing to do what it takes. And that's, that's with any job because, you know, nobody's going to walk up to you and hand you a pile of money and, and say, come do this for me. You definitely have to pay your dues. You have to show up on time. You have to be professional. You have to you know, do what you're told. You have to uh, be respectful of people on set. I mean, I'm still amazed at what some people will try to do while they're on set. And they're very specific about no pictures. Don't talk to the actors. Don't, you know, engage the crew unless they engage you, you know, stuff like that. Cause that's their job. And, this isn't like <laughs> it, I refer to it as a fa as a fantasy camp, but it's not really. So you have to understand that their jobs are really hard. I mean, they have really long days, a lot longer than the actors and and background. And uh, so be passionate about it, but also know what you're getting into, what it entails, that it that it is going to be work. You know to get yourself out there and and really don't give up before the miracle so many times i've thought to myself you know i keep sending out things and i don't hear much i don't hear much i don't hear much and then all of a sudden i mean you would have think this year would have been one of my downest years and i've actually probably worked more projects this year than than I have in the past. So um, you just never know. You never know what can happen and what they're looking for and what, what you know, the, the crew and, and people. Um, but yeah, if you prove yourself and people um, know they can trust you and rely on you and you're gonna show up on time and, and do what you're told and follow instructions and follow direction and you know, they'll, they'll keep calling you. That was actually another question I had. Um, were you not working during the pandemic? And apparently you just said you've been working more now than before. Yeah, and there's a lot more criteria right now. But actually, from my perspective, I mean, I, I have to go through, you know, they test us at the beginning of every week. And then we have, we had to sit through like a, how to conduct yourself on set, you know, what's expected as far as, you know, wearing your mask, washing your hands, keeping distance, um, 
you know, those types of things. But I have a call time in the morning and they're going to test me again. And I have, it's what they call a rapid test right before I go on set. Um, and if I test positive in any way, they'll send me home. Um, and if I don't, you know, if, if I'm in the clear, I'll, I'll be on set. But they also have asked us to make sure you're, um, you know, keeping your circle small. You know, don't be out, you know, with the crowd everywhere and, and whatever. They want people that are going to commit to, you know, doing their best to stay healthy and not, you know, be part of the spread. Um, but they have a lot more stuff in place, and it's actually, it's a lot more organized than, than it is when there isn't a pandemic. Um, but, like, all the food is prepackaged all the you know all of that stuff which normally it would just be a buffet um but yeah everything is you go by you get your food and you go sit down and you go eat it <laughs> and they keep everybody six feet apart you, which is nice because normally that's not the case normally you, you know not everyone gets a trailer um with comfortable seating and all of that but they they just have to because otherwise they they won't have enough people to put the show together. So there, there's a lot of benefits right now, but they are asking a lot more of people, but they're also paying us more. They're paying us to go in just to get tested and they're paying us to sit through, you know, the half hour training and, and they're paying a little more on the daily rate and stuff like that. So there are benefits to it. Okay, so your last question, if you could um, speak to any actor, have a conversation and lunch with any actor, whether they be dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, wow, that one's pretty easy for me. Uh, I've always been a huge Steve Martin fan and I know he does a master class and one of my friends that's also a Steve Martin fan said it, it was okay, but you get used to him being, you know, that performer. And then when you see him, you know, as kind of like a regular person, it, it's really interesting how different our, their regular persona can be as opposed to, you know, their performer mode or, or characters that they've played. But I've always loved him. I think he's a, a very funny guy, great talent, um, and just he stood the test of time. And he, even when he crossed over and started doing more dramatic roles and things like that, I've just always been very uh, much a fan of his. But th there's a lot of people that I – that I love and respect their work. I mean, not um, every everything, but um, there are certain directors and I've gotten to work with a lot of them, which, which is fun because you do get to see, wow, this is why they are highly touted and this is why people like doing their movies and stuff like that. And so, yeah, when Spike Lee came to town, of course, everyone wanted to be uh, in Chirac and I, I was fortunate enough to be part of that so amazing yeah okay well, and so even right now they're doing the the show called the shy and it's it's in its third season I think it's getting gonna get picked up for a fourth season but um it, it's pretty heavy duty what it's really like growing up in some of the tough neighborhoods in Chicago and what they deal with on a daily basis. So it's pretty important stuff. Well, that's all the time we have today for the show must go on. I'd like to thank my guest Steve Foster and I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.